How's it going? Welcome back to another great video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this new survival horror game, Vorax. That's right. And yes, this game is absolutely terrifying. And to say that this game is terrifying is a little bit of a understatement because I had to change my pants several times. For quite a long time now I feel like survival games and survival horror has been kind of done to death, okay, and there isn't really anything new in the genre and it isn't usually that scary, but this game truly captures the essence of, you know, feeling cut off um, and just the unknown, okay, this game truly is terrifying, I have to say, and I absolutely love it for that. Now bear in mind the gameplay of Vorax that I will be showing you is still in development, so just keep that in mind. But this game is, you know, already beyond promising, okay? It's honestly already much more polished than a lot of early access trash that we do find on Steam. This game will definitely have you on your toes a lot of the time. And like I said, I feel like it truly is refreshing in, you know, a genre that is kind of saturated at this point and kind of usually it's just like generic zombies or generic survival stuff. But this is a perfect blend of The Forest, DayZ, and um, kind of state of decay in some ways. It just takes so many good ideas, but it's all very unique and creative and original, which is what I find very refreshing about this game. That's why I think it's really important to look at indie games and support indie developers and games, because that is where the creativity, that is where the innovation is, which the AAA games lack nowadays with modern day gaming. You know, I have a big problem with that. So I honestly feel very blessed to have this video as a sponsor. So I'm very thankful to have Vorax sponsor this video because I'm just excited to show off their game. And honestly, I wouldn't accept any sponsorships that don't interest me or that I don't think are actually, you know, interesting or worth looking at. But I always complain about the modern day gaming industry, but this is exactly what we need. You know, it does remind me of older titles in a good way, you know, something like Half-Life in some ways where it's thinking outside the box and it's blending a lot of different ideas together to create a unique experience. So if this does look interesting to you at any point during the video, please go down to the Steam page that I will leave in the links down below in the description and the comments because you can actually, you know, wishlist this now and that would be a great way to support the developers. I feel like the developers are very confident in this game because even though this is still in development, it's still very polished, I would say. There's only a few things that I need to work on, but you can actually give this a try yourself. So go down below and use the link to try the demo out for yourself. And please do wishlist on Steam because that helps support them. So if you do find yourself interested in this game after my video, make sure that you go down below and use the link to go to their website Website. You can download Vorax by visiting IndieGala.com and I would highly recommend it because already there's a lot on offer here and that's a great way to support them so they can keep the development cycle going and they will continuously update it. But honestly, what's already on offer here is already very, very reassuring. So what exactly is Vorax? Well, Vorax is an open world survival horror game set on a Mediterranean island where a mysterious pathogen has infected the local population. If I can actually speak properly, I think I'm turning into XQC over here. So it does remind me in some ways of something like Resident Evil, especially Resident Evil 4, because it's kind of dealing with some similar themes, but with Vorax, it's far more unsettling I would say because you feel far more isolated and the pathogen and the creatures that you will encounter in this are very terrifying um, and it does feel very real world-esque because um, of just like what's going on and the kind of more realistic survival nature of the game which I really appreciate. So basically you are a mercenary sent to investigate what the hell is going on and find out what is causing this pathogen and all that kind of stuff. You'll be crafting tools, building up you know, kind of your base and 
a place to survive and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you can craft stuff like traps and fences. You have to upgrade and maintain your shelter to survive as you uncover the dark origins of the virus and the horrible mutating effects that it has. It's a very realistic world that they built here and it all feels very mundane and, you know, um, realistic in the good sense. But because of this pathogen, you know, everything that you interact with is slightly off. And I just love the fact that they kind of went for that theme. It does remind me of one of my favorite movies ever, Annihilation, where you're kind of encountering this alien parallel world on top of your own, um, where everything is just slightly off and different. And, you know, it just has such strong vibes. It does remind me of older games in all the best possible ways, you know, something like Stalker or Half-Life. Um, I love the art style that it's gone for as well, but it's just the theme that really hooks me here um, and the creatures and the enemies that you will encounter. And if you do pre-order Vorax, by the way, you will receive all of the updates for free going forward. So I would highly recommend that you do that because you can you know, help the developers by giving feedback and all that kind of stuff. And they truly do care about their community, which is another thing that I really respect. So I think it is 100% worth you doing that. Like I said, I will leave a link down below in the comment, in the pinned comment and description, so you can go ahead and do that. So even though Vorax is in an early state, I want to give you my early review of Vorax. So yes, this is my review of Vorax in its early form, bear that in mind, and only what I've played so far. Obviously, I haven't done the full game because it's not that type of experience as of yet, and this is more of a sandbox experience anyway, and it's basically at the moment how long you can survive and that's a challenge within itself because this game is goddamn difficult okay basically with this video i want to ask the genuine question is vorax worth it and i would say that it is and i'm going to give you the reasons why so i will be giving you positives and negatives like i do with all of my reviews that's just like how i structure my videos so i do hope you enjoy and if you are new make sure that you do subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos and become a wise boy today by joining the community okay don't be left behind with the dum-dums subscribe right now it takes two seconds and hopefully i can draw more attention to interesting games like this because i feel like these are far more important than the triple a trash that we get most of the time and this is actually pushing the envelope forward so let's get into it. So the first positive, like I said, is this is different compared to any other survival experience that you might have played in recent years. You know, it's a nice fresh spin on games like The Forest or DayZ or something like that. Um, and it does feel old school in all of the best ways. So I do like the fact that the crafting and all that kind of stuff, the resource gathering is done realistically. You know, for example, if you see planks of woods, you can break it down with an ax and collect the resources that way. If you see a bush, you can, you know, uh, slash it down with a machete or a knife or whatever to get the resources. And if you want to put up a barricade, you will have to craft yourself a makeshift hammer, which won't last that long. You know, items do have durability in this game, so bear that in mind, which adds to the pressure, especially since the whole system of this game is it's built around a day and night system. And I'm going to talk about that more in a second, but I just like how it's all very... Uh, hands-on and realistic when it comes to the gathering, the crafting and the resources and all that kind of stuff. So this is a sandbox experience so it doesn't limit you in the way that you want to play or you know how you want to set up your base or anything like that but do bear in mind that there is a story going on here as well which is super fun and engaging and you will be following along by basically completing tasks and kind of side quests and stuff like that, little jobs that you have to manage. The music in this game is also top-notch and very good at creating the tension, the ambience and all that kind of stuff and that's a very important aspect in any game, especially a survival horror game. Perhaps it would be better if it was created by someone like me, a professional musician, cough cough, wink wink, but um, I digress, it is still very good. So the nighttime system does remind me of titles like Dragon's Dogma in which the enemies will get a hell of a lot more crazy and just disturbing at night time but considering this is a survival horror game the amount of horrors that you will see in this game are truly something special okay you know you will get some enemies in the daytime like wolves and other animals but the mutants and the different variations of these mutants and especially the wildlife you know when you see a mutated dog and its head kind of split open um into this horrible demonic form. I love the aesthetic that it's going for. It is very much the game that I've always wanted, especially after watching a movie like Annihilation. I absolutely love that. And this really nails that aesthetic of, you know, mutation. And it's just very visceral and 
disgusting. Another thing that I do like about this game is it does feel very fleshed out with its mechanics, you know, like if the door is locked or if you need to complete some kind of mini puzzle, that just adds a new dimension to the game, which I really like and breaks up the, uh, you know, survival gameplay a little bit. But a big positive here, and this is something a lot of games don't get right, especially indie games, but this has done such a great job of it, is the UI. So here we can see the UI. Now there is a limited amount of inventory space that you do have to manage. I like how you can stack things on top of each other and everything of course has its own weight to it. Uh, you can see all of your stats here, your health and you know your hungry meter and all that kind of stuff. Um, and over there you have your details about what the you know item it is you're hovering over, basically your throwables, your weapon slots and you know you can't really Realistically have like a ton of weapons on you. So there is a limit to how much you can carry So it does feel very grounded and realistic in that aspect But the inventory here is just done a hell of a lot better and then of course you have your crafting on top of that So it's just a very nice It's just very well thought out and I really do appreciate that because a lot of the times that can be very frustrating in survival games, but this has done a very good job of balancing out the UI so I do find the story engaging and basically you do have different tasks to complete like finding survivors and basically finding you know uh, some loot some weapons stuff like that but none of it feels like busy work and that's the most important thing um, you know the locations that you will be exploring all feel very um, distinct and usually very disturbing because there's always some kind of disgusting mutation taking place um, but yes, it's very well done. Now, what I appreciate a lot in this game is it's very good at doing environmental storytelling, okay? And that's something that we haven't seen done in quite a while. It's something that Bethesda used to be very good at. And in survival games, you don't usually get that, okay? It's usually, you know, you get plopped on an island, you have to survive. Here, you know, you have lots of things to do. There's a story that's going on, the enemies and the, you know, the theme of the game with this mutation and all this kind of stuff that already makes it stand out compared to other survival games, but also the fact that it just feels very handcrafted because of the environmental storytelling. This is what brings it all together because you will be finding notes, you will be listening to audio logs, stuff like that. So if you like that type of environmental storytelling that Bethesda does, then you will definitely enjoy that here in a more survival setting. And it's just something that we haven't seen in a long time. And yes, it is punishing because items will not last forever usually, but it's not grindy, so don't worry about that. So it's got a nice balance of, you know, um, the resources that you need to craft the things that you need to survive, like a barricade, for example. And in this game, you will be clearing out these hot zones, okay? The kind of mutation beds of infestation, which does remind me of something like State of Decay with the Plague Heart system. And this is so cool because you will basically be attacking a mutation point and it's not just this one centered location that you need to worry about. So, for example, if you're held up in a house, the house will almost be waging a war against you and you will have to defeat, you know, these kind of mutation points, these eyes that pop out of the house and then destroy the main source of that mutation. Um, and I just think that's a super cool gameplay system. And then at nighttime, you have to defend against a wave of mutants that will be coming at you until you destroy for infestation. It just has so many different unique ideas from different sources of media all combined together like I Am Legend for example or Annihilation like I already touched upon. So you will have to you know defend this house until you can actually destroy the main mutation and that is when the game is at its most tense because basically you will be building up you know this base during the daytime so you are ready for the nighttime. So that is my early look at Vorax and I honestly think this is the most unique and interesting survival game that I've seen in a very long time and I'm very happy to have experienced it because I feel like this could be a really big hit in the future when it is at its full release but I definitely recommend checking it out already because there's already a lot of fun to be had in this game so like I said I will leave links down below and I'm just glad that you know the indie scene is branching you know, off in this kind of survival genre because we need more innovation and I feel like this game does a perfect job of balancing, you know, crafting with resource management and combat and it's all very tense and disturbing which is exactly what you need from a, you know, hardcore survival game and not many games do that that well but this one does. So 
that is my review of Vorax so far. I do think it is worth it and I do hope that you do check it out. So I do hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure that you do subscribe. Like I said, consider checking out my music on Spotify and maybe becoming a member to get access to extra content. And thanks so much again Vorax for sponsoring this video because honestly, your game is very interesting and I hope to see more of it in the future. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.